Now, there are some application problems we need to talk about with division. Now, let me, let me tell this to you. My wife was helping make lunches for this particular school in like the third or fourth ward of Houston. And the kids that go to the school, because of this, the school that it is, if they choose to go there, it's, it's by choice, they have to give up any kind of government assistance for lunches. And so what the school has done is they've reached out to other people, other organizations to make school lunches for these kids. So my wife is on this team that does this about once a month. And she was ma they were making these little Lunchables. And she was, they were putting in Triscuits and ham and cheese, um, you know, grapes, all, all kinds of stuff, good, good stuff for the kids. But she found out that she needed 472 Triscuits. Am I spelling this right? Is it C-U-I-T? Uh, yes. That's how I spell it. So she did 472 Triscuits. Now here's the thing. We had to look at the boxes and figure out how many boxes we need, right? Because you gotta pay attention. You don't just, I'm just gonna buy a box, I hope it works. Because when you're going to somebody's house the night before to put these things together, you need to make sure you have enough, right? So I looked at it and there were 60, 60 of these crackers per box. So the question that I'm posing to you is, how many boxes do I need? How was I able to figure this out? So 60 is what your divisor is, and you want it to divide into 472, right? So this, this, is, this is what I'm doing in the aisle of HEB to make sure that I get enough. So I'm doing 60 and I'm dividing this into 472. All right, so if this is where estimating and rounding comes in, okay? 60 goes into this about how many times? Because if you round this number, I might round this to about, say, 470 or maybe 500, a nice number. It's about how many times would that go in there? Think about 60, think about multiples of six. Well, six times to give you 360, so, so seven times, right? So if it goes in, whoops, I'm doing that. It goes in seven times, what's seven times six? It's 42, so seven times 60 is 420. And that would give me, what is a remainder? It gives me a 52 for a remainder. Remember when you're doing division, your remainder term down here can never equal or exceed your divisor. Because if it does, then you didn't go high enough. So how many boxes of Triscuit should I buy? Hold on a second here. If I just buy seven boxes, how many crackers will that be? How many is seven times 60? 420. I still need to make up for the extra 52 crackers, right? So the, yeah, that's what you do. So what I need to do is I need to buy by eight boxes, so eight boxes will equal how many crackers? Eight boxes at 60 crackers per box will equal how many crackers? 480. So that means I'll have a few left over. Is that going to be okay? That's kind of what you have to do, right? You could say, you know what, sorry guys, I was gonna buy another box of crackers, but <laughs> I didn't, so about eight of you have to go without the full lunch. But guess how many boxes I actually bought, though? Nope, I bought nine. <laughs> because some of them would be broken. There's real world application here, but then you have to extend that and go, we, how many times have you bought a box of crackers or Triscuits or Wheat Thins or anything and every single one of them has been perfectly formed and none has been cracked? Oh, that happens to you? Really? You are you're <laughs> magical. All right? But I know that some will be broken. So if I buy an extra box, it's only about $1.78 more to do that. It's not that much more and I can make sure that, they're, that every kid will have whole crackers. Right? Now here's another thing that we ran into. This was me last night. I was grilling last night. I was actually happy to grill. Now this is what happened. I had 42 ounces of 
of meat. I was making hamburgers, all right? Now, when I make hamburgers, I want to make quarter pound hamburgers. It's usually like a decent serving size. I know some of you are going, but Mr. Craig, three ounces is really the appropriate serving size. Any more than that is really excessive. So I want to make four ounce burgers. How many burgers did I make last night? How many? One. No. Oh. Ten. 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 I made ten. I made ten. Because if I look at this, in my head I'm doing all right. I need to divide four into forty-two to find out how many burgers I can make. So you made ten. Four goes in here once. Four doesn't go into two, so that's a zero. And I have a remainder of two, right? Now. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, bad. So if, if I think about the real world application here, I could make 10 perfect four ounce burgers, right? What am I going to do with the extra two ounces? I make a slider. No, no, here's the thing. I'm not weighing this out. I do not have a scale to make sure that everything is exactly four ounces. But I know that I should be somewhere around 10 burgers, right? So when I've got this big mixing bowl, I kind of eyeball, I can cut it down the middle and say, okay, I should have five burgers out of this one hunk of meat, five burgers out of this other hunk, and then try to divide it as best I can. Were all the burgers exactly the same size? No. But were they close enough so that you didn't really tell a difference? Yes. Good enough for government work, as they say, right? So here's an example where that remainder kind of gets spread out into everything else. But in the example that we have above, I couldn't really do that. I could not do that. Okay. Uh, who the <laughs> Are you serious? The cook, the chef gets the bigger burger. That's not even a question. 